Real Virginia is proudly produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation. Since 1926, Farm Bureau has been working to preserve Virginia farms and our rural heritage. Visit our website at VAFB.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce the wonderful local products we enjoy. Brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. A summertime favorite is back on the menu. Have you tried grilled sweet corn yet? And we visit Lancaster County for our county agricultural close-up. Chesapeake Bay, Atlantic to Appalachia, home in my heart always. Welcome back to Real Virginia, everyone. We're coming to you this week from Garner's Produce in Westmoreland County, where the whole family stays busy raising and selling produce. Ricky Gibson reports one particular vegetable is still a favorite among shoppers. Green beans are one of Virginia's iconic summer vegetables. Before commercially canned and frozen foods became readily available, generations of children picked the beans fresh each day and snapped them before supper, often with an older family member's assistance. Today, green beans continue to be a family favorite at farmers markets and in home gardens. People love green beans and potatoes because green beans come in about the same time as potatoes do, so you got those two. Um, and we, you know, we're going to harvest potatoes tomorrow and we'll have green beans to go with them. So um, they're probably one of our middle selling crops, you know, corn and tomatoes are probably top one. So, but they do fill the gap in the middle. So, you know, it gives you a lot of color. We raise three types of beans. So um, it just gives more variety for our roadside market. Bernard Boyle and his family raise fresh vegetables for both their own roadside stand and some markets in Northern Virginia. As with a lot of other Virginia vegetable growers, green beans are an important part of their annual crop cycle. About 550 Virginia farmers raise green beans commercially, and thousands of home gardeners plant them every spring. We don't necessarily go directly to farmers markets, but we have a lot of buyers all over, basically south side Virginia. It would be a broad, I mean, like Roanoke, Lynchburg, Danville, and then obviously our own produce stand here on the farm in Halifax County sells, sells our produce. and then. Recently, we even started putting some in food line through a third party. Julian Hudson Reese, the third, or Trey as he likes to be called, is the third generation in his family to raise fresh produce in Halifax County. Timing is crucial to have the beans ready for summertime sales. We grow three types of gr green beans, you would call them, we call round flat beans in Kentucky Wonders. We start planting like the first of April, first week of April. And, and we stagger the plant so to, so to get beans all year, you can't, we have to plant, we plant about once every eight to 10 days. That's why you can see some of them are bigger than the other ones because they just go right down the line. And they start getting ready. We've been picking beans about two weeks now. We're getting into the second or third week and, and hopefully if things go good, we'll keep picking on into September. These green beans right here were planted the last week of March. We planted them with a, uh, just a little push seeder uh, into black, black plastic mulch uh, with drip irrigation underneath. Uh, we're trying to get early as possible so then we take some hoops and we cover with a little crop cover and then as soon as uh, the, the plant gets to the top of the cover we'll start taking the covers off because you know they're, they're getting too big for the, the little mini greenhouses. While some farmers use machinery to pick green beans, many other growers still pick them by hand to maintain high quality. Green beans need regular fertilizer and water, and some growers run irrigation drip lines under the plastic used to control weeds. While considered a summertime treat, green bean production actually slows down in midsummer when the real hot weather hits. Every year's different, but usually early in the spring we pick a few more because I, I don't know, it looks like the quality's better, better early in the year, but we may pick 150, some weeks, 200 bushels a week. And then as we get later into the summer, August, September, we may drop down to, we try and get 40 or 50 bushels a week. That'd be about average for us. So if the weather and the heat is right, we'll have uh, greens, beans all through the summer and into the, you know, the fall. 
but sometimes like when it gets over 95 degrees green beans start dropping flowers so you start losing production and like when it gets real hot it's really hard to grow beans like in like july and august so it's always a couple weeks that you you have beans out there but they won't produce like other produce it's important to buy green beans as fresh as possible for the best taste and texture. They call them snaps for a reason. They're supposed to snap when you bend them over. But I mean, that's the main thing. Just keep them fresh. They don't do when they get when they get soft. They don't snap. They're not as good. If you're looking to purchase your green beans fresh from the farm, check virginiagrown.com or vafb.com for locations of a farmer's market or roadside stand near you and enjoy them while you can. Summer's bounty will soon be gone for another year. In Westmoreland County, Virginia, I'm Ricky Gibson reporting. Virginia farmers raise some of the tastiest fresh produce in the country, and it's big business too. Each summer vegetables, melons, potatoes, and sweet potatoes are raised on 1,835 Virginia farms and are valued at more than $111 million. Most are raised on smaller farm operations, but 217 farms raise vegetables in large quantities. Green beans are not a top 10 seller in the fresh produce market, but many vegetable growers still raise them to keep their customers happy. Hi, today we're going to be talking about double cropping for the home garden from the ground up. Please stay tuned. We are stronger together, especially at this difficult time. For over 90 years, we've watched our membership grow and we're honored to be part of such a special community. Thank you to the farmers who provide for us every day. Virginia Farm Bureau is proud to serve our members, their families, and to give back to our local communities. That's the Farm Bureau way. Summertime heat means spring crops are finished. But Chris Mullins with Virginia Cooperative Extension says now's the right time to plant for fall. From the ground up. Well, hello and welcome. Today we're at Faulkier Education Farm. We're here with Mr. Jim Hankins, the Executive Director of the farm. Jim, thanks for letting us come out today and talk about double cropping. Now, I hear that a lot with farmers. Was that something that, well, first of all, what is it? Well, you know, we're standing right here in this potato patch, which is getting really pretty close to being ready to harvest. What's really important is as soon as these potatoes come out, I'm going to put another crop right here in the same space. I'm holding a cabbage because as soon as I know those potatoes are out, I'm going to pop in cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, my fall cool season crops right in the same ground. You know, um, anytime I'm disturbing the soil quite as much as I would with harvesting the potatoes, the best thing to do with that soil, don't let it just lay there fallow, put something else in there. That's how you can really maximize your success. Well, that sounds like actually great advice for a home gardener. I bet a lot of people don't do that. Farmers do it, yep. but I think that could be a great use of the land. You know, there have been times when I've, potatoes are nice because they'll just kind of store in the soil and I've waited and delayed to harvest them. These days now, I want them out in July so that I can get my fall cool season crops in the ground in August. One big mistake a lot of folks make is waiting until fall to plant your fall crops. The truth is August is when you should be planting broccoli, cauliflower, um, cabbage, kale, okay. um, that will go on, you know, last year we were harvesting cabbages into the first week of December. And they went in right where we had planted potatoes. Oh, that's great. So these potatoes, early in the spring, you're putting those in the ground. Yep, around March. And you're gonna be harvesting those, when do you think? Mid-July. Mid-July, and then going back with transplants. Yes. Of these, uh, of cabbage, plant, cabbage plants. Cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and kale. And like you said, it seems, you know, for some of the home gardeners, it seems a little bit hot time of the year to maybe do a fall crop, but that's the best time, like you said. Oh, it is absolutely the best time. If 
And if you don't get them in the ground in August, you know, as I said, some of my cabbages weren't mature until the first week of December. Yeah, yeah. So get them in the ground in August. Okay, so this yep. is a lot about timing, and it's a lot about really utilizing everything you've got to the, the maximum degree, I'm thinking. And being good to your soil. Like I said, if when I really dig up all this soil with my heart potato harvest, the best thing I can do is put another crop right into that soil. Don't let the weeds take it over. All right, well, I think you're saying this is good for the home gardener then, right? Absolutely. All right, well, Jim, thank you so much for letting us come out and talk to you today about, about how to really use your resources wisely. Double cropping is the way to go. Well, for more information about double cropping in the garden, contact your local county extension office and talk to a master gardener. For From the Ground Up, I'm Chris Mullins. We'll see you next time. From the Ground Up is presented with the generous advice and assistance of Virginia Cooperative Extension. Visit their website at ext.vt.edu. Hi, I'm Chef Tammy Brawley from the Green Kitchen. Coming up on Heart of the Home, some delicious grilled street corn. Stay with us. And now, a sneak peek into a day in the life of a Virginia dairy cow. They get their day started. They have some lunch. Get some exercise. Spend time with their friends. And then end their day with dairy sweet dreams. Real dairy, real life, real delicious. Lots of folks love to grill meat outdoors, but Chef Tammy Brawley says don't forget your vegetables, especially sweet corn, in the heart of the home. Hi, I'm Chef Tammy Brawley from The Green Kitchen. We're here today on Heart of the Home to show you guys some delicious summer recipes. We're going to be using some delicious Virginia corn. We're going to grill it. We're going to make a little grilled street corn. We're going to make a delicious sauce to go with it. First, we're going to talk about how to husk corn. Everybody's got a different way. It's totally up to you. Doesn't matter as long as you get it husked. So I'm going to cut off the top end of the corn. I'm going to go ahead and pull the husk back. We're going to pull off all that silk and everything. You could rinse it if you want to. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I like to pull off the core piece. Probably the easiest thing to do with this would be to grill it outdoors on your outdoor grill. What if you don't have one? What if you live in an apartment and can't have one? Well, then you need a grill pan that you can use indoors. So we have a grill pan here on a burner that's kind of somewhat high. We're going to go ahead and add this third ear of corn to it. We've already got a couple ears going. Add that right there. You'll sort of hear it pop a little bit. So who knows, maybe we'll have popcorn. All right, we're going to make a delicious sauce now. What we're going to do is we're going to add some lime juice, some lime zest, some chopped garlic, some, we're actually going to use a crema here, which is a lighter sour cream. Sour cream is totally fine if you want to use that. and a little bit of mayonnaise. And then last, we're gonna add a little bit of cilantro, chopped cilantro. We're gonna save some cilantro also too for garnish, to show you guys how easy this is to do. I'm gonna stir this around, get it nice and mixed up. Right. You also want some sort of, of co a cotija or a queso fresco cheese that's a crumbling cheese. Um, I would think it would be just as good with a crumbled feta perhaps or um, maybe some crumbled parmesan. So we've got our sauce nice and mixed up. We have our grilled corn. Now I'm going to hold it. See it's nice and grilled, nice and charred on all sides. It's a great way to do it. Put it down on your board. You want to go ahead and slather your ear of corn with the sauce. You can either do this with a spoon or a basting brush, whatever's easiest. Or if you wanted to put the sauce on a platter, you can roll the, the corn in the sauce. 
Ah, oh, smells like summer out here, just like the grill. Then you want to take the crumbling cheese that you have on the platter, roll your corn in the cheese, pop it on a serving platter. You want to toss it with a little bit of garnish of cilantro there. And a couple of lime wedges. And there you have it, some delicious grilled street summer corn. And I'm Tammy Brawley with The Green Kitchen. Join us next time on Heart of the Home. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at vafb.com slash recipes, as well as on Chef Tammy Brawley's website at greenkitchenrichmond.com. Sweet corn is one of the most valuable summer vegetables Virginia farmers grow. It's raised on more than 4,300 acres on 416 farms across the Old Dominion, from the plains of coastal Virginia to the hollows of the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's so valuable a crop that some producers use irrigation to ensure a good harvest. Most farmers raise sweet corn on 100 acres of land or less, and sweet corn is always harvested by hand. You can find local sweet corn at most farmers markets or roadside stands in season and at some Virginia grocery stores. Lancaster County is one of many historic farm communities in Eastern Virginia. As Burke Muller reports in this week's County Agricultural Close-Up, producers here are quickly adapting to change. Located on the southern tip of Virginia's northern neck region, Lancaster County has water on two sides and that supports aquaculture. But its long stretches of flat land also makes it ideal for row crop producers. Craig Giese is one of those row crop producers. He's been farming in Lancaster County for nearly 40 years and has lived here all his life. He says the population has grown considerably just in the last year. Farming, a lot like other businesses, has become specialized. So now you have a lot of farmers who just specialize in grain operations. Uh, beef is more demanding. You uh, have to be there every day. Plus, you have to have certain size factor to be uh, profitable there. The vast majority of the county's agricultural production focuses on corn, soybeans, and wheat. But recently, some new crops like canola and specialty grains, such as premium barleys, are being planted. And other agricultural products lend diversity to the county's farm economy. We have uh, a good amount of livestock production here within the county. With that comes hay production, not only for, for livestock, also for equine, so horse hay. Um, we also have vegetable production, several farm stands, on-farm stands here within the county. Um, and then due to our close proximity to the water, we have a bit of uh, aquaculture production as well, so farm-raised oysters. Thomas Hyde and his partner Callie Robinson operate Steamboat Wharf Oyster Company out of Moratico, a small community on the Rappahannock River. We just started last year in March. Um, we planted 75,000 and uh, this is part of that batch. So that's uh, one year old oysters. Hyde says oyster farming is all about pulling the oysters out, cleaning them off, then putting them back in so they can grow. Hyde and Robinson have relationships with restaurants in South Carolina, Virginia Beach and Fredericksburg. They also travel to farmers markets in Norfolk and Spotsylvania to sell their oysters. The two met in college at the University of Virginia and decided to give oystering a go after graduation. In the short time they've been here, the two have seen plenty of other newcomers to the community. After the pandemic, a lot of people from up north in northern Virginia have moved down here. and Obviously, people have river houses, as they always have on the Rock Panic. Mm -hmm. um, but the real estate market's pretty crazy right now. <laughs> There's not a lot for sale, and when you do list your house, it does sell really quickly. Back on dry land, Lancaster County farmers have seen the influx of new residents as well. While some mourn the loss of farmland that often comes with development, Ronnie Forrester also sees the value his new neighbors bring to local crop producers. The people who come down like uh, fresh produce, so it helps the vegetable farmers. And uh, right now, America and young people are going to, you know, they want food off the farm, you know, Fresh produce, uh, fresh pork, fresh beef. 
Forrester is one of the few cattle producers remaining in Lancaster County. He raises between 50 and 75 head of cattle at any given time. He also grows corn, soybeans, and wheat. The property has been with his family since the 1950s, and he's been working on the farm since he was 10. It's so rewarding watching the crops grow, uh, working on the machinery. You know, it's, you know, it's just a very rewarding in uh, being able to uh, look at land, uh, put a crop in, watch it grow, hoping that it, you'll produce something. Lancaster County has a total of 80 farms spread out over 16,238 acres. The market value of all agricultural products is $5,550,000. Almost all of that comes from crop production, which bring in $5,101,000. Grain producers account for $4,954,000. Hay and other crops come in a distant $41,000. Cattle and calves earn $104,000 for Lancaster County farmers. Aquaculture producers bring home $321,000 each year. The migration of new residents is evident to all who live here. Even some of the newcomers have taken up agriculture after relocating to Lancaster. Case in point, Carolyn Quinn who came from the high-powered world of D.C. lobbying and began a new career raising market vegetables by opening dug-in farms. As the, as the county government, it's been very supportive of agriculture. It's actually written into the county plan how they support agriculture. And so when I stood up as a farm, uh, you know, they zoned me into agriculture. They've been super supportive. She got the name Dug In because at first she was here as a part-time resident commuting back and forth and decided I never wanted to leave again. So I bought a piece of property and I named it Duggan Farms because uh, I'm dug in. I'm never going to go back. <laughs> and so I started farming. I just started obviously growing, kind of fell in love with growing and wanted to do it on a bigger scale, uh, kind of as a hobby, and then decided to make a, a life work out of it. And here I am. Spend a little time in Lancaster County and you'll understand why people find a farm lifestyle so attractive. Oh, I love it all. I'm a a diehard farmer. Uh, I can't get enough of it. You know, if I could do 24 hours a day, I would. Long-term Lancaster County residents love where they live and they love farming. But like their newcomer neighbors, they're also embracing change in order to keep agriculture alive in their community. In Lancaster County, Virginia, I'm Burke Moeller reporting. We're so glad you could join us this week to celebrate all the bounty Virginia has to offer. From the kitchen, to your home and garden, to our beautiful wide open spaces, we are proud to say that this is Real Virginia. For everyone from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a great week. Chesapeake Bay, Atlantic to Appalachia, home in my heart always. They're out there on the front lines, the brave, the dedicated, the relentless. But there's another front line. The one that helps nourish all others while facing epic struggles of their own. So in this season of uncertainty, A few things remain certain. The rain will fall. The sun will shine. And together, we'll continue to grow. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. 
you're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We have 37 parks across the Commonwealth. Every year, 10 million visitors enjoy 600 miles of trails from beaches to mountains, hundreds of cabins and campsites, even yurts. We are Virginia State Parks. There are 30,000 roadway accidents each year involving cars and farm machinery. Farmers will be moving equipment for planting and harvest season. The slow moving vehicle triangle in red and fluorescent orange colors and flashing lights allow for quick identification. When you see an SMV sign on farm equipment, slow down, prepare for sudden stops and slow turns. Patients will save lives. Just remember we all need to share the road, we all need to be responsible, and we need to be guided by the law. Motor vehicle safety starts with you. We are stronger, together, especially at this difficult time. For over 90 years, we've watched our membership grow, and we're honored to be part of such a special community. Thank you to the farmers who provide for us every day. Virginia Farm Bureau is proud to serve our members, their families, and to give back to our local communities. That's the Farm Bureau way. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's Smokey! It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, it. or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. You're going to need me. You're going to need us, all of us. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food. You're going to need our determination, our compassion, you're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires.